Okay, thanks very much, Lisa. Um, one of the disadvantages um, of speaking at the end rather than the beginning um, of, 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 of a meeting like this is a lot of um, what I'm going to say, um, others will have said similar things before. So I'll, I'll, over the next 10 minutes, um, maybe slightly less, I'll tell you a little bit about um, SHIP, which stands for Sexual Health Improvement for Populations and Patients, what SHIP's about, um, how we go about um, doing what we do, uh, a little bit about um, some of the work we're doing at the moment, and then um, perhaps at the end, if you've got any questions, um, I'll do my best. Um, to answer them. So, um, SHIP is a partnership um, between, um, uh, between people who do research around sexual health, people who provide sexual health services, people who commission sexual health services, um, people who use sexual health services, uh, and people who, who, who plan um, sexual health services. And some of the different um, organisations that are represented within this uh, partnership are um, listed um, on my um, on my on my my slide there, um, and what we are about is, is is trying to transform sexual health outcomes and services, and um, uh, what perhaps makes um, ship a little bit um, distinctive um, within um, the um, the family of health integration teams is that, that ship is a partnership that um, essentially in some senses already existed before um, the hits came about. Uh, existed in terms of um, the um, Bristol North Somerset and South Gloucester Sexual Health Partnership Board, um, which was a, 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 a body whose uh, constituency included the same sort of people um, that I've just um, that I've just spoken about, um, and 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 uh, but a body that was going to cease to exist because NHS Bristol, uh, which had brought um, the partnership board together, um, was uh, was going to cease to exist as it did um, on the first of April last year. So the HIT was a way that we could continue the work we'd already been involved in in the partnership board and the way we do that work is we have a steering committee that meets quarterly and um, we have various work streams um, that report back to the steering committee and do the various projects um, that, um, that, that we're overseeing. And those projects relate to the priorities identified in the sexual health plan which is a plan that arises from the joint strategic needs assessment that, um, you know, that basically tells us um, uh, how um, should we be trying to improve sexual health um, for the population that we work with and the current priorities of the sexual health plan are uh, the priorities of, of SHIP and those are priorities around um, reducing um, uh, the burden of disease associated with chlamydia infection, um, reducing very late uh, diagnosis of HIV infection, um, reducing teenage pregnancy and social inequalities in teenage pregnancy, um, recognising and responding to violence associated with intimate partnerships and, um, and, 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 and creating and strengthening information systems that are fit for the purpose of supporting needs assessment and supporting audit and evaluation of the services um, that we have. <coughs> so essentially, you know, the way we do that is, um, is, is, is um, according to a fairly tried and, um, and, 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 and trusted to some extent model. Um, we help our colleagues in public health assess and prioritise need um, we advise our colleagues in commissioning, all we can do is provide advice, we don't have any um, um, powers in this, in, in, in this regard, but, but we advise our colleagues in commissioning around commissioning evidence-based care pathways that um, seem likely to be able to meet this need and to do that in an effective uh, and cost-effective way to provide value for money. And we identify evidence gaps and we try to facilitate research to fill those evidence gaps. And with regard to the, the last of those aims, th th this is some of the activity that we're involved in, um, in, 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 in currently. Um, Peter mentioned earlier that there's only um, a very small amount of resource that so far has been um, uh, made available to the HITS. That's true, but it's a small amount of resource that we're extremely grateful for. And some of that resource has helped, um, f uh, that mainly comes um, through um, RCF funding um, to um, the uh, Avon Primary Care Research Collaborative, is, is, is supporting some of these projects. So we have projects around um, piloting in 10 practices a web-based referral tool to a centralised partner notification service um, for um, uh, um, uh, around um, chlamydial infection. We have a project 
Um, there is a collaboration with industry that involves um, the incorporation of point of care tests for chlamydia and gonorrhea in um, patient pathways um, within the Bristol Sexual Health Clinic because we have undertaken some modelling and we've just published that modelling recently that suggests that incorporation of these tests in patient pathways should both improve patient outcomes and reduce costs. So we want to see if that, um, if that really happens. Um, we are um, conducting some work around, um, around devising, implementing and evaluating um, a new policy around testing for HIV infection in primary care to try and reduce very late diagnosis of HIV infection and all the costs for individuals and the wider population associated with that. Um, we have a, a collaboration with the, um, the MRC FAR Institute, which is the MRC's um, health informatics um, research initiative, um, uh, to um, field test um, basically NHS um, data concentration appliances, uh, which are essentially pieces of hardware and software that take data, um, routine data from various um, parts of the health system and make it more accessible to support needs assessment, um, audit and service evaluation. Um, and we also um, have projects around patient and public involvement. Um, to, uh, we are um, hoping soon to implement a new um, policy around patient and public involvement around sexual health um, in Bristol, North Somerset and South Gloucester and then we want to um, evaluate the effect of that policy, see if it actually um, achieves what we hope it will achieve. The challenges we face, I mean, some of them are the same challenges that um, everybody faces. I've already mentioned the fact that, you know, that budgets are obviously um, are constrained, although hopefully um, with the advent of the Centre for Leadership and Applied Health Research and Care, um, more resources will become available for the kind of things that we want to do, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention that on the next slide, actually. Um, a particular challenge for sexual health is that... Um, since the NHS reorganisation of earlier this year, commissioning responsibility um, for sexual health, which had previously essentially resided in a single organisation, uh, that organisation being NHS Bristol, um, is now spread across several organisations. Uh, lead commissioning responsibility um, lies with the local authority and public health within the local authority, but also um, responsibility for commissioning some aspects of sexual health services um, resides with the CCGs uh, and some resides with NHS England. And the responsibility for, um, uh, for commissioning and you know, essentially paying for um, some elements of, um, of service provision is not entirely clear and you know, obviously in that situation um, sometimes um, uh, individual organisations are not necessarily um, and keen to acknowledge the fact that it's, it's their responsibility to pay for those uh, particular um, aspects of care. And I think it, it's probably true to say um, as well um, that, um, uh, that public health, as I say, who are the lead uh, commissioners for sexual health services, are still adapting um, to their, um, their, 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 their new environment um, within the local authority and there are some challenges associated with that. But there are also uh, opportunities that we hope we can take advantage of um, to do the sort of things that we want to do. Opportunities provided, as I've said, through Clark West, which certainly um, does provide um, a not insubstantial amount of, of, of new resource um, from the NIHR to undertake applied collaborative research. And you know that's basically what we want to do. And, uh, and uh, linked to, um, to Clark West is the new West of England Academic Health Services Network, uh, which provides resource and structures to put um, evidence uh, for how to effectively um, improve population health into practice, which is another opportunity uh, we hope to avail ourselves of. Um, OK, this is actually my, my last slide, and, and this, is a, this is a slide that... Um, that Barbara Coleman gave to me um, a couple of weeks ago because uh, Barbara suggested that um, what I should try and do is include some, some, some good news in this presentation. And I think this, this slide um, represents some good news. It's a slide of, um, of, 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 of trends in teenage births um, by quintiles of area-based deprivation index of multiple deprivation. So it's ecological data over time. But, but it, 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 it shows um, a, a, a perhaps surprising uh, and, 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 and I think um, heartening picture in that it suggests that in Bristol between 2005 and 2012, um, teenage pregnancy 
um, which you'll remember was one of the priorities um, within the, um, the Bristol Sexual Health Plan, um, has reduced um, both in absolute terms but also in terms of, 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 of health inequalities in that um, the yellow line, the top line, is teenage pregnancy in the most um, deprived um, quintile of, of, of residents in Bristol. Um, and the uh, blue line and the red line are, um, are, are, are the next most deprived and, 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 and the rest of the city. Now obviously these are ecological data, it's um, difficult to put um, uh, you know, too much weight on any causal interpretations of them, but I would suggest that um, you know, those um, data probably um, reflect an effect of, 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 of services in Bristol, not a single service, a number of services. Um, but if, you know, if we assume, as most of us have assumed, that um, one of the main drivers of teenage pregnancy is socioeconomic circumstances, well, over the period um, that um, this graph represents, those circumstances have probably got worse. So we would have expected um, teenage pregnancy to have gone up. Uh, particularly to have gone up in the most deprived areas, um, but that hasn't happened. In fact, the opposite has happened, and I think this probably reflects um, uh, effects of, of a number of in initiatives, um, the 4YP initiative, initiatives to make long-acting reversible contraception um, more accessible through general practices, um, targeted outreach, um, particularly in schools. Um, and I think um, Barbara's absolutely right. This is a good news story, um, so it's a good point um, to finish. And I hope in a few years' time I'll be able to tell you about more good news stories um, in relation to sexual health in Bristol, North Somerset and, and South Gloucester. Thanks very much.